Welcome to this week's Wellness, Wealth and Mindset Weekly Lessons and Experiences from a Past Week. So let's get stuck in to today's episode. Health-wise this week, I've been having a lot of conversations with people and I get this question come up quite a lot when I do health assessments for people. And the biggest question is, oh, should I cut out my carbohydrates? Should I change this in order to lose weight? Should I go on a keto? Should I go on a Slimming World? And what I say to people time and time again is that you don't have to do any of it. All you have to do is be more mindful of the calories you consume in. So it's interesting to talk about this because I feel a lot of people tend to always reach for the next shiny object, shiny object syndrome, when in fact the answer is right in front of them. All they need to do is be more mindful of what they're consuming, how many calories they're having, the portions on their plate and increasing activity and that can be as simple as going for a walk every day and trying to get your 10,000 steps in regularly because doing anything consistently like that over a long period of time is what's going to make the biggest changes to your lifestyle in the long run as opposed to cutting out carbs for a short period of time and then going back to eating carbs and putting that weight back on you might see quick results and quite a lot of weight loss if you do cut out carbs initially but if you do enjoy a pizza from time to time like I do, then why would you want to deprive yourself of that? And once you go back to having more carbohydrates, then that weight is generally going to go back on. And most of the time when you cut out carbs, you're just reducing water weight in the body. So because carbohydrates have a lot more fluid in them, they retain water in the body. So you might not actually be losing body fat, but just losing water. So I think it's really vital that you understand the fact that Just being more active daily, walking, taking the stairs. If you get to the gym, fantastic. Obviously, we all like to do more physical activity generally, but just being more active because most of our jobs are going to be sedentary these days. And being more mindful of how much you're consuming, how much you're putting in your mouth every day, I think is more important. And what's going to help you address probably the biggest issue that you find when it comes to managing your weight is just probably just eating eat a lot of the time because we're bored tired as opposed to actually being really physically hungry so by being more mindful of when you eat how much you eat hopefully will help you understand your emotions around food as well and control that better certainly going forward if you are more mindful of it so instead of looking for the next quick fix instead of focusing on should i remove certain things in my life that i enjoy certainly have less of them obviously you don't have loads of them and being more mindful of them is definitely the key rather than restricting yourself to any stupid diet that you do. in the long run is not going to last you. So keep things simple and be mind more mindful of those things. And that will certainly help you improve your health and well-being in the long run. In terms of wealth this week, I've been really sort of mindful of my spending habits. And I'm not doing it about you, but certainly being more mindful of the ingoings and outgoings when it comes to managing your finances, I think is really, really vital because a lot of the time, especially at school, we talk about and get taught about maths, science, English, but we really ever don't get talked about when it comes to being educated on financial literacy. So learning how to budget, learning how to save, all these things are really important. And certainly if you're not really mindful of it, just like if you're not mindful of your calories you're consuming, you can gradually maybe increase the spending habits which will impact you when it comes to being more financially stable especially if you're looking to save for a holiday or just put money away for a rainy day so i think it's really important to go through your bank statement on a monthly basis maybe at the end of each month just review your spending habits see what you've been spending and look at ways that you can maybe save a bit more money obviously if you're spending unnecessary money on eating out and socializing You maybe could cut back on the odd social night out in order to save a bit more money. If you've got a few direct debits that you're gribed to but not using as much, then obviously you could cancel those as well. So I think it's really, really vital on a monthly basis just to review your spending habits. It's something I do consistently as well. And keep a check on my bank statements on a sometimes a daily basis by checking in on my apps. Really easy to do. And there are apps out there that you can also use, which will categorize where your spending has been going as well, rather than you have to go through that individually one by one and make a little spreadsheet yourself. 
So there's plenty of apps that you can actually do that for you. And other apps out there that you can also use where it will actually save a remainder of the money for you as well. So exploring kind of things like that, I think are really vital just to make things easier for you to manage your finance, but also to make you more aware of how you manage your finances individually yourself in order to support yourself and make sure that you're in a financial situation to make sure if anything bad happens, you have the ability to support yourself. I think there's a stat in America that hardly anyone has about a month's worth of savings to live off. They live in month to month in terms of the ingoings and outgoings. And obviously we saw that quite a lot during the COVID pandemic as well. So the more you can certainly have put away, especially at least probably at least three months of savings put away just to survive if you had to be out of work for any reason, then that's certainly a nice nest egg just to fall back on. Anything greater than that certainly might be worth more investing that money into assets that can create more wealth for you as opposed to just saving more money. So something to think about this week when it comes to wealth, that's something I'm going to be doing when it's going to be tracking my spending habits and assessing my ingoings and outgoings for the last month and where I can make some savings, spend a bit less and make sure I'm just on track in terms of my saving goals going forward. Mindset wise this week, I've been having a lot of conversations with some clients and doing a lot of market research and a topic was coming up quite often after speaking to over a dozen people. And what I found is that a lot of people generally found that they were always reaching for something that they previously had and wanted now, but their circumstances, maybe age, fitness levels, injuries, might not allow that to be a possibility. And it got me thinking about acceptance and how as we get older, we must have to accept to a certain point of view, our ability to perform at certain levels as we age is going to be not as good or as effective as it was when we were 20. And you can see that through professional sport that people tend to decline in their performance as they get older. They have a peak age when it comes to their sport in terms of when they're there at most, at their performing at their best at that peak. So, and that's probably maybe in their mid twenties for a footballer. If you look at swimming, that's normally in their teens, early twenties. All sports are very, very different, but in terms of when we peak, that's going to vary depending on the individual and obviously the, when it comes to how much exercise they're doing within that sport. But in terms of being an amateur cyclist in my case or an amateur just athlete and just enjoying being physically active, I feel there needs to be more of an acceptance that you might not be able to perform as much as you could have done previously and be more comfortable where you are going forward. And there's no reason why you can't aim to progress and try and improve yourself and get fitter and get stronger at any age. It's really vital that you keep progressing to maintain your fitness overall and improve your overall health and well-being. But I think there should be more of an acceptance that I'm not going to be able to train five to six days a week like I used to when I was 20 before I was married and had kids. But I can still train three days a week and be healthy and still have a healthy weight and lower my risk of heart disease and still enjoy a day out on the bike and then perform well without thinking... I need to be training like I did when I was 20. And I think the more you have an acceptance of that, the more you will find that you feel more comfortable in yourself, maybe more of an inner peace within yourself as well when it comes to that acceptance. And I've seen that certainly within a network of people that I know, maybe going out and socializing changes as you get older. Certainly you don't want to be going out drinking as much as maybe you did when you were younger, when you're single, you go out a lot more often especially trying to socialize and meet more people as you grow up. And then as you get older, you tend to do that less. But certain pockets of society tend to relive their youth a little bit when they catch up with their friends again and want to kind of party like they did 20 years ago without realizing that they are now 20 years older. And maybe other people in that group would probably like a quiet night in and maybe just a few quiet beers and a nice meal as supposed to try and to hit the clubs, stay out all night and be a 40, 50 year old trying to party like they did when they were 20. And for me, I feel that comes down to a, a failure to accept where they are in life, Fail, almost a resistance to let go of what they had and an acceptance of what they have now. And that's not necessarily a negative thing. And I feel like accepting it will be more of a positive thing going forward because then you can embrace the stage that you are in life 
when you embrace that age and that acceptance and find inner peace as opposed to always thinking oh, my life was better back then or my life is going to be better in the future and we're living in the past or the pre or the feet or the in the future we're not living in the present so essentially that's going to become harder for you to feel and find more inner peace and acceptance on your day-to-day -day and within your life in that moment because you're always wanting what you haven't got anymore or maybe striving for something that might be out of your reach depending on your situation so i think if we can find more inner peace and accept certainly that's something i'm going to be focusing on a lot more and something i've always been sort of really conscious of but something you could you can think of and maybe concentrate on this week when it comes to finding more inner peace and acceptance let me know if you find that you are maybe struggling to let go of certain habits or certain past experiences that you are trying to hold on to in, in one form or, or another and obviously how you maybe might be able to let go of that and take that take that forward and be more conscious and more embrace your situation that you're in now and fully embrace that to get the most out of that moment and that situation you're in so you can be happier in that moment as opposed to feeling that you're happier in the past or you might be happier in the future for example so something to think about when it comes to your mindset this week so that wraps up this week's wellness wealth and mindset weekly thanks for you for listening thank you for watching over on youtube as well and if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter don't forget to head over to neildamerell.com where you can subscribe for free and you get a regular newsletter emailed to you every Friday alongside the links to the podcast and YouTube episode. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you again next week.